everyone, Max Windjammer here. And I want to do a mod real quick about something with the new LTX gear. As you know, if you have one of these, you may run into the problem. Uh, as you know, when you reload, this is a normal functioning uh, tagger here where you press this thumb button here and you can reload by doing this. Well, sometimes you may end up with a tagger that does this, where you push this and nothing happens. It just doesn't want to budge. There we go, not work. But it takes a lot of effort to push this to get this working. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to open this up and clean the mechanism inside here, okay? So uh, let's check this out and see how it works. Okay, let's get started. So obviously you wanna turn off the tagger and next you wanna take off the battery tray. So we'll take off the cover, take out the batteries and start taking out all the screws. And the screws at the bottom of the battery tray are a little bit smaller, so you wanna set those aside so you don't get them mixed up. And when I first did this, I didn't realize that you can't still take it apart because there are two screws at the top of the dome. They're kind of hidden here. These are smaller screws still, so when you take these out, still set them aside from everything else because you don't want to get them mixed up later on. But once you have these out, you can open it up, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Okay, very cool. Uh, one note, however, uh, this black cylinder here, uh, from what I've read on the message boards, uh, there's a cylinder or a coil that's very, very sensitive and e can easily get damaged. So you want to uh, make sure that this, um, if you're going to do any mods, you just stay clear of this part. Uh, fortunately for this mod, we're not going to do anything up here. Our concern is down here at the handle, and this is the reload mechanism. Basically, this round circle up here um, interacts with the other thumb screw. You can't see, I don't, didn't take a picture of that but uh, there's an arm that presses down on this plunger here and when it pushes down this plunger it pushes this other side away from the plunger releases this pin and the spring then pushes down the ammo core pretty simple the area that we need to apply some lubrication to is this area here this is where the most friction takes place and if you get a bunch of plastic dust built up at this area then it will not it makes it very difficult to um, activate this uh, reload mechanism so all we're going to do is just we're going to basically I'm just going to hold it open with my thumb like this and I'm going to take some WD-40 and just uh, spray it in on the inside of it uh, typically these come with a uh, straw so you can like do precise applications of this thing but I lost a straw, <laughs> so I'm just going to spray it on in here, and we made a big mess, but uh, this is what we've got, and I'm just going to clean it up a little bit with the paper towel, and just another note here, um, after I did this mod, I found that the ammo core had a hard time staying locking into the um, handle. Once you press the ammo core back up into the handle, it seemed to be hard to stay locked into place. And the solution to that I found was that I had too much uh, WD-40 still in here. So I cleaned up all the WD-40 on all the moving parts, especially the uh, locking mechanism that keeps the ammo core in place inside the tagger. So if you do spray, if you make sure you have a straw so you can apply just a very small, tiny amount inside the tagger at the right part. Me just spraying wildly here into the uh, tagger here was a bad idea. So if you do do that, make sure you clean it all up, and once you do so, your tagger should be working normally. Also, one note here, there's been talk on the message boards that uh, perhaps WD-40 may not be the best choice. It may not uh, interact well with the plastic in the gun. Um, there are other lubricants you can use. Uh, one that I found is uh, one from DuPont here. It's called Teflon Multi-Use Dry Wax Lubricant. And... Um, this seems to be a good alternative. Uh, I found this at Lowe's for about $4. And you can see on the back here it uh, says uh, will not attract grit or grime and features a patented self-cleaning technology that sheds dirt so parts can stay clean, work better and last longer, prevents rust, eliminates squeaking and binding on metal, 
plastic and wood. So looks like this will exactly do the trick that we need. Uh, this stuff kind of goes on wet but eventually dries. So you want to use this uh, sparingly. And there we go. We're going to put the top back on. And before we screw everything back up again, let's just try it again real quick just to see if the thumb uh, release works a little bit better. And it looks good. So basically what we'll do now, we'll just uh, take our screws and I got them separated here. These uh, on the left here are the main body screws. The ones over here are the screws for the bottom battery tray. And these, the smallest ones yet go at the top with the dome. And I'm gonna put the dome ones in first. They're the real tiny ones. And then we put the screws at the bottom for the battery tray. And then we put everything else in for the rest of the body. And so now let's test it. So there we go, pretty simple. The hardest thing about this is really just taking the two halves of the shell apart and then putting it back together. That's, it's pretty simple. So if you have any WD-40, you can use that. I'm sure there's other types of lubricants you can put in there as well, um, but this seems to work really well. So anyways, this seems to be a common problem people are having with LTXs. Hopefully this fix uh, will um, help a lot of you out there. So anyways, uh, good luck and stay safe.